Turok Rage Wars is a video game on the Nintendo 64 console that was released in 1999. It was designed purely as a multiplayer game with only deathmatch as the main focus of the game, along with other modes. The game did not have the single player story that Turok was known for in other titles. As you go through the game, you'll notice that there's no cutscenes to explain what's going on. There's no text information within the game. It just throws you into deathmatch battles right away. Even after beating the final boss, there's nothing. The game loops around by unlocking more characters and then repeating this process until you have all extra weapon abilities, ammo and health upgrades unlocked. It's one of those games from my past that I did enjoy, even though it did have some flaws. Most of these characters are from Turok 1 and Turok 2. As I went through the game to relive those memories from long ago, I started wondering if there really is a story in the game. The American version of the game is what I grew up with, but sometimes a few things are changed when the game goes to another region, like they get some additional content, or they change stages or music. I was hoping to find something related to the story if I checked out the German version of the game, but all I found that was really different were that some models or skins were changed, like the campaigner had different skins, but they kept the same model. Adon and Syrah were swapped out for these new models. The gore and violence in the game was also censored. I prefer the original design, but each country has their own rating system with violence in video games, so I can see why they did this. They also changed a small thing about Bastille. He's now wearing a helmet with a visor. I don't see what the problem was in the original design, unless there's something I'm missing, but if you can find it, then let me know. Even though some versions are called American, US, or Europe, you might find it labeled as World Version, since all the other versions are the same and only the German version is the different one. Aside from those changes, the only different thing I could find related to the story is in the German version of the game was the title of Rage Wars, it was now renamed to Legends of the Lost Land. I looked at the video game manual that came in the box to see if there's any more information about the story. It has basic information about the controls, game modes, weapons, the normal stuff. At the very end of the manual, there's a small section that has information about some characters, but it was not enough. I wanted more. As I searched through online text guides, I noticed some people had written sections about the boss characters having some kind of backstory, or at least a bio of them. A few of these guides had the same information, so where did it come from? Well, it turns out it came from the official strategy guide. It was written by David Boyle and released in late 1999. I was able to get a copy of this strategy guide. I wanted to look through all of it to see if I could find anything related to the story. I was really hoping there was something here that the game or the manual did not have. And this is what I found. The story in Turok Rage Wars does not continue from what happened in Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. That is only connected with Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion. When production on Turok 2 had completed, the team still had many features they wanted to include within Turok 2, but they were unable to do so. And then they had the idea of creating a Turok game that was a bit different. Something with a different style of combat a standalone product that had a different flavor, a game geared towards extreme action frenzied gameplay and intense competition, something that was unique at the time, and thus Turok Rage Wars was born. The only section of lore about this game that I could find in a strategy guide is the bio for each character in the game, so I'll read out what it says for everyone. And this only comes from the strategy guide and nowhere else. It's not in the game. It's not in the game manual. It's only in the official strategy guide. Joshua Fireseed is known as the Coyote Knight. For generations, the firstborn male of the Fireseed family has taken up the mantle of Turok. Now, it is Joshua's turn to face his destiny and rise to the challenge of his ancestors. As the current Turok, Joshua wields the power of the Light Burden, 
a sacred vessel that contains the last pure fragments of the energy of creation. The awesome power held within the light burden has been sought by the forces of evil since the dawn of time. The rage wars were born out of this lust for the power of creation. Now Joshua must prove himself worthy to take up the mantle and wield the light burden. Adon is known as a scholar, vizier, sorceress, and warrior, born of a noble family and raised under the scrutiny of her mother's watchful eye. Adon was prepared since birth to take up the mantle of Speaker of Forever Light. The Speaker of Forever Light serves as a liaison between the people of Galiana and the Council of Voices, the disembodied conscious of the Lost Land's greatest leaders. The Council have lived and ruled Galiana as immortals for thousands of years having uploaded their conscious minds into massive computer systems centuries ago, the council lives on, though their bodies have long since died. As the only governess of Galiana permitted to speak directly with the council, Adon's position is one of the highest respect and ultimate sacrifice. The speaker must serve only the needs of the council and the people of Galiana. Although she has served the council faithfully since her mother's untimely death, Adon often longs to be free of her bonds. Adon participates in the rage wars as a representative of Galiana, seeking to uphold the honor of her house and prevent the light burden from falling into evil hands. The Velociraptor is lightning fast and able to attack with a deadly flurry of teeth and razor-sharp claws. Velociraptors are one of Turok's most ancient enemies. Genetically enhanced intelligence makes Velociraptors of the Lost Land far more deadly than their pure prehistoric ancestors. Centuries of defeat at the hands of the Turok have fanned flames of their hatred and driven them to new depths of evil. The Perlin are an ancient race of primitive, ape-like creatures that have inhabited the lost land since its birth. Deeply resentful of any species that are their intellectual or technical superiors, the Perlin take what they cannot create and destroy that which they cannot possess. Perlin society is based on strength and ferocity. The juggernauts are the very essence of Perlin brutality and raw power. The Perlin regard humankind as weak, squeaking insects. They are particularly resentful of the progress that human race has made in such a relatively short time. The Perlin believe that if they can crush the mighty Turok, the rest of mankind would soon fall. An evil cybernetic tyrant, the campaigner once ruled over the lost land with an iron fist. The campaigner's reign of terror was cut short in a dramatic battle with Tal Set, the greatest warrior the Turok lineage has ever produced. When he was younger and more human than machine, the campaigner battled Tal Set in the Rage Wars and nearly triumphed, only to be crushed at the last moment by a devastating blow. The injuries were so terrible that much of the campaigner's body had to be replaced with cybernetic limbs and synthetic organs. The dinosaurs are genetically engineered dinosaur hybrids. They are utterly evil and extraordinarily dangerous. Their ferocity is matched only by their capacity to inflict suffering and death upon the weak. The dinosaurs share the Velociraptor's hatred of Turok and will stop at nothing to see the light burden ripped from Joshua Fireseed's cold, dead hands. Grotesque, rotting bodies are the vessels for evil spirits trapped in the places of known dead side, desperate to escape their cold, lifeless prison and feast upon the luscious warmth of the living. The lords of the dead are one of dead side's most terrifying inhabitants. A single warrior has been granted a reprieve from the land of the dead in order to participate in the battle for the light burden. Should the Lord of the Dead emerge victorious, 
the power of the light burden would be used to shatter the netherscape that separates dead side from the world of the living, and an age of untold terror and carnage would unfold. The mantids are a highly evolved race of insect warriors. They live only to see that the hive may grow and devour anything that stands in their way. Their presence in the lost land has been contained due to the valiant efforts of Joshua Fireseed. Having vanquished their queen and her brood, the Turok have all but destroyed the mantid colony in the lost land. Without their precious queen to propagate a new generation, the mantid colony is doomed to extinction. The light burden could bridge the gap between the lost land and the mantid home world, allowing a full-scale mantid invasion and sealing the fate of all life in the lost land. The mantid drones are the colony's most numerous protectors, fearless and cunning. They feel no pity or remorse for their victims, only the cold, indifferent resolve of a species that feels nothing but the need to multiply and destroy. The most highly evolved of the mantid warriors, the soldier is a heavily armored nightmare, huge and swift. The soldier is one of the most formidable opponents that the rage wars have ever seen. The nervous system of the mantid soldier has evolved beyond the need to feel pain. A soldier's place is to defend the colony from invasion or die trying. Nothing else is of concern. Together with their brethren, the drones, the mantid soldiers will fight to the end to see the future of their colony restored. Though nearly harmless while alone, a pack of mites is a dangerous and elusive foe. In the hive, the mites serve as the cleaning crew, scouring the hive 24 hours a day. The mites remove any filth, decay, or foreign matter from the premises and ensure an optimal breeding environment. The mites also tend to the larvae that brood in specialized chambers throughout the colony. The destruction of their queen has awakened their dormant aggression, and the pack prowls the rage wars in search of quarry to destroy. The blind ones are a primitive race of subterranean cave dwellers that are perhaps one of the most ancient races in all the lost land. The blind ones are flesh eaters. They journey to the surface only in the deepest night to hunt for warm-blooded prey, which they drag screaming into their underground chambers to be devoured by the hungry multitudes. Despite their blindness, the blind ones have developed a form of extrasensory perception that allows them to feel their surroundings, much as a bat navigates with radar. Having been nearly decimated by Joshua, the blind ones are now starving for vengeance and the desire to pluck the beating heart from Joshua's dead body. The dark spawn of an unknown terror known only as Oblivion attempted to destroy Joshua during his assault on the Primogen, though they failed. The presence of the Oblivion spawn at the Rage Wars has left Joshua searching for a meaning to their attacks and the purpose of their evil. Adon warned Joshua that her scientific readings of the Oblivion energy signal bore a remarkable similarity to elements of the Turok signature. Specifically, Adon discovered that trace remnants of the same energy that the light burden contains, an energy controlled by the Turok lineage since the lost land was related, were present in the Oblivion signature. Though he does not know how the Turok line is connected to this Oblivion, Joshua is fearful that the connection may indeed spell doom for the Fire Seed family. The Formidable Mainstay of the primogen's defense system. The biobots are a grotesque amalgamation of living tissue and state-of-the-art electronics. The primogen was defeated at the hands of Joshua Fireseed, but the young Turok failed to completely decimate his forces. At the moment of the primogen's death, the biobots programming activated a berserker program. 
sending the remnants of his army on a bloody rampage with orders to destroy any life that they find. This was a last twisted act of revenge by the Primogen. The Biobots have tracked Joshua and his allies silently for nearly two years, slaughtering any innocent lifeforms unfortunate enough to cross their paths. In a series of frantic firefights, Joshua managed to destroy all but a single Biobot. This lone survivor has tracked Joshua to the Rage Wars. Deposed Lord and General of a once mighty army, Bastille was sentenced to death when he and his honor guard attempted to assassinate the king. His standing as a lord revoked. Bastille was on the precipice of death when a temporal distortion in his home world pulled him through a fracture in the netherscape and deposited him in the lost land. Bastille found himself in a land ripe for the taking, a world full of technological marvels and a host of lesser races that could be easily controlled. Bastille's shield-generating armor was worn by a great warlord whom he poisoned after winning his trust. Although Bastille soon amassed a sizable following of warriors, he failed to attain recognition as anything more than a roving thug commanding a host of rabble and thieves. Determined to win back his honor and be regaled as a true leader, Bastille has set his eyes on the light burden. With it, he could rule the lost land and exact his revenge on his former king. Sira began her life as the child of an arms maker. Her father crafted the finest weapons the Lost Land had ever seen. Having forged weapons for the famed army of Arisi, her father's skills were unmatched in his day. Sira felt a great kinship with her father, and the fine blades and rifles he crafted felt natural in her hands. Practicing in the pre-dawn darkness with every manner of weapon she could obtain, Sira quietly honed her skills and perfected the art of killing. On a cold winter's morning, Sira was awakened by the sound of raised voices. As she peered through the window of her room, Sira saw a band of armor-clad men beating her father and demanding entry to his armory. When her father spat in the face of the man in charge of the mercenaries, he was cut down. In a blind fury, Sira burst through the window. A girl of only 14, she waded in to the band like a deadly whirlwind of lead and steel. Three of the men fall. Before their comrades knew what had happened, the rest fled for their lives. Sira buried her father and burned the house that she was raised in. Armed with her father's weapons, Sira set out to hunt for his murderers. As time passed, and the last of the killers fell from a bullet fired too far away to hear, Sira's heart grew even more cold. The grief that she had felt for her father festered and turned to raw hatred. Sira's tragic childhood loss had birthed in her the seed of a cold-hearted and lonely woman. She travels the lost land as a hired gun, the song of her long rifle, her only companion, the money she earns, her only solace. She has accepted a bounty on Joshua Fireseed and has entered the Rage Wars to collect her trophy. The Symbiont are a race of large, highly intelligent arachnid parasites, using the bodies of their hosts as vehicles. The symbiont are able to not only to control the physical actions of their host organism, but to tap into their minds and rob them of their collective knowledge, memories, and will. Once the symbiont has drained the mind of its host, it can create a psychic tether between itself and its host organism. By using this psychic tether, the symbiont can essentially control the hapless body as if it were its own. The symbiont remains hidden while its other body does its bidding. The symbiont can push its host body beyond its normal limits, cancelling out the effects of pain or injury.
and driving onward as if the poor creature were nothing more than a tank or automaton. Should the body that the symbiont is riding become too damaged to function, the symbiont will detach itself and scurry after a fresh body to usurp. However, the symbiont cannot animate a dead body. A symbiont on its own is nearly helpless and unable to defend itself from all but the least skilled adversaries. The symbiont wish to destroy Turok so that they may begin assimilating the lost land unchallenged. The first man to take up the mantle of Turok, Talset, is the greatest champion mankind has ever known, and the greatest Turok that has ever lived. Having witnessed the death of his wife and child, and the subsequent destruction of most of his tribe, Talset was pulled into the lost land through a fissure in the netherscape. When it was made known to him that the fate of mankind rested on his shoulders, Talset was torn between the apathy the death of his people has fueled and the sense of honor and courage that he lived by his whole life. Ultimately, honor and courage triumphed. Talset embraced the mantle and came to be known as Turok, son of stone, the valiant one, and the fury of hope. Talset is the veteran of more battles than can be counted, and has made the name Turok feared by all that is black-hearted and evil. Now, let's talk about the timeline here. It seems like the Rage Wars has a very confusing timeline. It says the campaigner fought against Talset in the Rage Wars back when he was younger. So, does that mean the Rage Wars took place before the first Turok game? Maybe. But it also says that Adon enters the Rage Wars to prevent the Light Burden being taken away from Joshua. And then we have enemies from the Turok 2 story just thrown into the mix. Even though some of these characters are still alive after Joshua defeats the Primogen in Turok 2, it's a little confusing, but I think the information in these bios about previous characters is just made up to have a small connection or small reason for them being in the Rage Wars. The comic book of Turok Evolution follows the same story as the game, but it's only a small portion of what we know that was in the game with a few additions. The year is still 1886, with the added date of November 10th. The location is in Texas, just near the Mexican border. We are then introduced to Mr. Bruckner, who just attacked a tribe and wiped all of them out, except for one survivor. He is named Tal Set. The two of them engage in what was supposed to be a final battle. We see them both fall through the ground as it falls apart beneath them, they discover a gem which emanates some type of magical power. Bruckner would cause an explosion with his pistol, and the next scene is Talset on the beach of the Lost Land. Tarkin would find him on the beach and rescue him, then bring him back to his camp. When Talset awakens, he would meet the river people. He's introduced to Mariana and would later meet the Jun. They would later be visited by troops that follow Tyrannus. A short battle occurs, but Talset and Dejun save everyone. And this is where the comic book story ends, which is later continued in the video game Turok Evolution. And yes, this game's timeline is supposed to take place before Turok Dinosaur Hunter on Nintendo 64. During the story of Turok Evolution on the Game Boy Advance, it says that Talset was the last survivor of the Saquin nation. He lost his wife, his child, and all the other members of his tribe when Tobias Bruckner attacked his people. He tries to confront Bruckner in a duel to the death, but their battle is interrupted when he gets pulled through a sudden portal, which brings him to the lost land. There he meets the river people, and their greatest warrior named Dejun would agree to help Talset on his journey. You eventually defeat Brockner in the end, and there's two endings, one where you finish him off, and the other when you spare him, but he takes himself out with a grenade, perhaps from the shame and embarrassment of losing. 
During the other Turok Evolution game, which is the first person shooter, Tarkin says he was looking for the Son of Stone for hundreds of years. He was the one who summoned Tal Set, which could mean he is the one who opened that portal. The ending for this Turok Evolution game is a bit different with Bruckner. When he is defeated, the dinosaur he rides on ends up falling on top of him, trapping him right there on the ground. A few dinosaurs are later seen approaching him, which might finish him off. Even though the timeline of this story takes place before Turok Dinosaur Hunter, perhaps at some point Tal Set had memories of everyone he lost from his tribe, and this could have been motivation or a reason to become a villain in Turok Rage Wars later on. This is somewhat linked to the ending of Turok Evolution. Tal Set accepts his destiny to become Turok Son of Stone. Tarkin prays that the path he has chosen, the path of war, will not consume him. Which brings us to Turok Rage Wars, where he is wearing special armor with symbols. Now, this is only a theory, but perhaps this is what happened to Tal Set in the end. He was consumed by war. Just like all the villains he defeated, now he became one. And that covers the hidden lore about Turok Rage Wars, a game that has almost no story within the game itself or the manual, but at least the strategy guide has some information about each character, which details some things about their past and why they are here in the Rage Wars now. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like rating on it. And if you want to see more content like this, just subscribe to my channel. If you made it to the end, then leave the comment, I am Turok, and I will heart your comment. This was a very long topic to cover, but finally, it's done. Thank you so much for watching. This is Carlos, or Acid Glow, and I'll see you in the next video.